Welcome to the STEM OBT USCIS online filing walkthrough. The purpose of this walkthrough is to give you some general information as you proceed through the online filing process. Before going through this walkthrough, please review the other videos and information that we have about the STEM OBD process at Santa Clara University on our website at scu.edu slash STEM OPT. STEM OPT is an extension of post-completion OPT for 24 months or two years. If you are just now graduating and want to apply for OPT, please visit scu.edu slash OPT for information on the initial OPT application process. Before beginning the application process, you will need to submit an I-983 training plan, as well as a STEM OPT I-20 request to the SCU ISS team for processing. You will need your STEM OPT I-20 in hand in order to file the STEM OPT online application with USCIS. We also recommend that you collect documents ahead of time so that you find the process easier in the online filing system. Again, this is for informational purposes only and meant to be helpful to you as a Santa Clara University student. If you have questions that come up throughout this process, you may either email iss at scu.edu or you can schedule a STEM OPT express advising session with our office. Let's get started. Once you're logged into your USCIS account, you'll see a variety of options. The first thing that you're going to select is file a form online. It's gonna ask you what type of form you're planning to file. When you're filing applications for an EAD card, you use the I-765 application for employment authorization. You're gonna notice a few notes. This primarily is explaining that only certain types of applications for employment authorizations can be submitted in the online system, specifically applications for students, which is great because this means you can file online. We're going to go ahead and get the form started. Within the system, there's information about the eligibility to file online, the filing fee, the fact that they will not give you a refund once you file your application, the fact that you should collect your documents ahead of time, the fact that some applications need biometric appointments, which OPT and STEM OPT do not, and the fact that once you submit your application, you will be communicated with through the USCIS online system. I'm gonna go ahead and read those and move through. And then it also just explains how the online system works. I do recommend that you read through this before proceeding with your application itself. Of course, there's a government privacy notice and paperwork reduction notice, as well as the security reminder that the system will automatically delete your application if you don't work on it within 30 days. We're gonna go ahead and get started. It's really important that you select your eligibility category correctly. This form is very relational. Depending upon which answers you give, additional questions will appear or not appear. Additional pieces of evidence will be requested or not requested. So it is important that you answer the eligibility category question correctly. For STEM OPT extension applications, 24 months or two years of additional STEM OPT after their first year of OPT, you will select C3C STEM extension. The next thing that you'll see is questions that immediately appear based on the fact that you're filing a STEM extension. First, you'll be asked, what is your degree? I recommend that you put the type of degree, for example, a master's degree of science or an MS, and the name of your major, for example, computer engineering. You can see that there's the ability to type. You will notice that there are character limitations. So if you need to abbreviate by saying, um, you know, 
CompSci or InfoSys, that's okay. Just do the best that you can with the degree. They'll actually see the degree on the diploma that you'll upload as a part of your evidence. The next thing that they want to know is your employer's name exactly as it's listed in the E-Verify system. You will not know this automatically. You need to ask your company for this information. And again, it might be a full legal name. For example, instead of just Apple, it'll be like Apple Incorporated, for example. So again, get this information from your employer. Additionally, you're asked for your employer's E-Verify ID. This is not the same as the FEIN or Federal Employer ID number, which is a nine digit number that has a dash that's on your I-983 training plan. You do not know your employer's E-Verify company ID and they will need to give it to you directly. It's usually a five to seven digit number. There's no dashes, dots or hyphens. Um, and again, the company has to give this to you. There's nowhere that you can look it up. You don't know it. It's not on your training plan. So do make sure that you get this from the company before proceeding with your application. Once you answer these questions that are specific to STEM OPT, we're going to move forward into the application itself. It's going to ask your reason for applying and your going to select initial permission to accept employment under the STEM OPT category. If you're applying for a replacement, lost, stolen, or damaged card, please speak to ISS first so that we can talk through that process and timeline to make you aware of any complexity with your travel or employment situation before you apply for a replacement. So this is primarily guidance for an initial application. It's asking if you've previously filed an, a Form I-765 of course, the answer in your case, if you're applying for a STEM extension, is yes, because you applied for a Form I-765 when you applied for OPT, and there will be questions about that later. It's asking if someone's assisting you to complete the application. The answer is no, you are completing the application on your own. This is just general information. We're not actually preparing the application for you. You will do that for yourself. And then it's going to start asking your biographical information. The information here should be pretty obvious. Obviously, you're going to get this from what you know about yourself. You know your name. You know whether you've had previous names or not. You know your date of birth. So I'm just going to quickly go through and fill in this information um, just using, you know, a sample situation. So we're going to say the student's name is student sample, um, and they've never had another name. But if you have previously had another name, like you changed your name when you got married, for example, or have a different name on a different passport, you would just click yes, and the extra information will come up. Otherwise, no, and they don't ask additional information. They're asking how they can contact you. And you can go ahead and just put your cell phone number and select that it's a mobile number. It's asking for your email address. As you know from when you applied for OPT, we do not recommend that you use your Santa Clara account because that gets deactivated and turned into an alumni account. Instead, use a personal, for example, a Gmail account, a Hotmail account, an Apple account. It's asking about your current mailing address. This is the address that they will use to mail you your STEM OPT EAD card once it is approved. It is critical that you fill this out accurately and that you use an address that's stable. If you are sending the card in care of a friend or a family member's address in the U.S., you would fill out the in care of line. For example, if you're sending it to your cousin, then you would say your cousin's name, right? And that's what you would put there. But if you are sending it to your own address, you leave the in care of line blank. You do not include any information. In the example I'm going to give, this student lives in an apartment near campus still, and we've put the street number, the street name, the apartment number, as well as the city the state, and the zip code. You will notice that I am not including any additional information. It's just validating the address. 
And I'm not including, for example, domicilio apartments or Park Central apartments. We do not write addresses like that in the US. In the US, we use the street number, the street name, the apartment number, if there's an apartment number, the city, the state, and the zip code only. Again, leave the in care of a name blank unless you are sending the mail in care of a family member or a friend. Otherwise, if you live at the address where you're having it mailed, leave the in care of blank. And then it asks, do you live in that, in that address? And if you do, you just click yes. If you don't, you would click no. And again, provide your US address where you live. The rest of these, again, just biographical information. It'll just ask for general stuff that you really should know already. I'm just using kind of a sample, um, just some, you know, kind of information from a, a sort of fake case uh, just to get you kind of an idea of what the application looks like, how it feels. The dates are always going to be in that U.S. month, day, year format. So we're going to put, for example, um, January is the month, uh, 13th is the date, and then the student, let's say, is born in 1999. And then it's, again, asking for citizenship. You know, we're just picking an, exam an example, just an example. Um, and so uh, if you have dual citizenship, you can add that second citizenship as well. It's asking for the I-94 number, which you would find on the I-94, which you can download from the CBP system, we have information and links on our website. When did you last arrive in the US? Again, the month, the day, and the year. Um, the place of arrival, it has um, all tons of locations. Um, most of our students arrive um, in uh, San Francisco. So we're just gonna find, um, in this case, San Francisco International Airport. And then again, there's hundreds and hundreds of immigration statuses. Um, we're, we're looking for those Fs. So we're gonna look for F1, which is the student status. So this person entered the country as an F1 student. And then it's asking for a passport number. Um, travel documents are not relevant to students. You didn't enter on a travel document, you entered on a passport. Um, it's asking for maybe the expiration of the passport, um, again, that month, day, and year format. It's asking what country issued the passport, um, and again, that's going to be that country of citizenship. Um, and then the current immigration status, again, there's hundreds of immigration statuses, but we're looking for that F1 status because you are still an F1 student. And speaking of F1 students, it's asking for your CVS ID number. It does say if you have previously had other CVS ID numbers, if you went to school at a different school, if you took a break from school and came back on a new CVS record, it does ask for you to provide that in the additional information section at the end. Most students do not have A numbers unless they have pending green card applications. If you know your USCIS online account number, you can include it. Otherwise, you can leave it blank. Everyone applying for STEM OPT already has a social security number. So you would just go ahead and put your social security number um, here. You would click yes, and then it asks for the number and it puts the little dashes in for you. Um, and then if you lost your card, you could ask for a new one, but chances are you still have it. So you would click no, you don't need a card and move on to the next question or section. This section is asking for you to upload documents. This is the evidence section. On our website, we do instruct you to create a folder that has all of your evidence before you even get into the online system. Um, and then there is just a little bit of confusion around the evidence types. Um, some of these you'll leave blank, some of these you'll attach maybe one or two documents but it's generally a drag and drop system or a select system. I do have a file folder set up with my evidence, so I'm just gonna go ahead and drag and drop. I'm gonna attach photos, and again, we have this on our website, but there's a photo composition tool that you can use to check the photos before you upload them. If the photos are not acceptable, you will get a warning that they're not acceptable, so you can retake them. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and accept that and I'll see the warning. I, I, this is not actually a passport photo I'm uploading, which is why I got the 
the kind of warning that it's not acceptable. Um, but we'll move on to the next piece of evidence, which you can do here on the bottom or you can do on the left hand side. The next thing you're asked to upload is a copy of your I-94 arrival departure document. For most students, this will be downloadable through the USCIS, or excuse me, the CBP online system. And it's asking, what is this? And you're gonna say it is a form I-94. And then this asks for you to upload your employment authorization document or government ID. We recommend that you upload a copy of your passport here. Um, because that is the best type of government ID to upload. Um, and then if you previously had um, an EAD card, for example, the EAD card from your OPT, you should be able to upload a second piece of evidence. So you can upload both the passport and the OPT EAD card under the section. We want you to upload the OPT EAD card because you're doing an extension and then the passport because they want to see your biographical information. The next section is asking for that STEM OPT I-20. Um, you will need the STEM OPT I-20 from our office before you can even get in here and file. Do not file until you have that STEM OPT I-20. If you fail to include the STEM OPT I-20, your application will be denied. So this is critical, critical, critical. Um, and again, I have that I-20 and I'm going to go ahead and just drag and drop it into the system. You got that STEM OPT I-20, which should have your signature, our signature on page one, and then our signature in the travel section on page two. It's a scanned copy. The next thing that you're going to be asked to upload is proof that you have a STEM OPT degree. Um, and for our students, that's going to be a copy of your diploma. So we're going to drag and drop that diploma as well as your transcripts, and you can download those from the eCampus system. The diploma gets mailed to you, the transcripts you can um, pay to have just an electronic copy created. And you're gonna upload both of those, both the diploma and the transcripts. You can combine them into one PDF or upload them as two PDFs, that's fine, no problem. The next thing is the kind of one trick question, and that is institutional accreditation. It is important that you know that this evidence would only be submitted very rarely for students that are applying for a STEM extension based on a not Santa Clara degree. So you will know because we will tell you if this applies to you. For the vast majority of students, this does not apply to you. You do not include evidence of accreditation um, because you are applying based on your Santa Clara STEM degree. It's not required. So you just leave this blank. Do not include institutional accreditation unless you are told to do so by Santa Clara universities, DSOs. So again, we're just going to skip this because this doesn't apply to this student because they're applying based on their Santa Clara STEM degree, not some prior university's degree. At this point, it's asking for additional information. This would be if you had prior CVS ID numbers um, that you had used, if you had had a previous immigration status that we recommended you advise on. But most students will leave this section blank, very simple. And then you get to the section where you're able to review it. Um, it's really important to understand that once you pay for your application, you are not able to go back. So it is critical that you do review the application. You can download a document um, and look at the actual kind of form as it's filled out. You can also just look in this section and see the information you provided. Again, the form is very relational. So if you say there's no preparer, then there's no information about the preparer, for example. And so a lot of the questions are intentionally left blank, but you should take your time to review and make sure that everything that you submitted is accurate um, before you move on to the applicant statements confirming that you read and understand English as well as the declaration that you're attaching accurate documents and that everything is correct. Um, and then uh, you will move on to the section where you are able to pay for your application. The application fee currently is $410. As you can see, it does change over time. So it may be more or less um, depending upon what's going on in the government system. And then you are always able to pay via credit card, um, debit card, or a U.S. bank account. 
I'm going to just kind of very briefly show you. I'm not going to obviously go through the payment, um, but you can select your bank account and it kind of gives you helpful hints about where to find your bank account information. Um, or uh, you can um, go through the system and um, submit using a credit card. Um, again, I just pop myself back into the um, review section. Um, and so we'll go through um, and re-add the, the signature and then look at that credit card option as well. And so again, there's the option to pay via your bank account, um, which has information about how to find your routing number versus your bank account number. Um, and then there's also alternatively an option to pay via a U.S. debit or credit card. This does not need to be your debit card, your credit card. It could be a family member, a friend, somebody that you trust. But of course, it takes out the money immediately. So it has to have at least $410 of availability. Um, and it just kind of is a normal system. Once you enter the information and it charges you, it will take you back into the USCIS system um, and back into your account uh, that will then have your receipt number immediately available. As you're going through the process, it is possible to leave and um, go back and it, it saves a draft as you're working on it. So you can go back into, you can see this is the application I was just working on. Um, and you can use that left-hand navigation to change information. Um, if you needed to go look something up, if you didn't take our advice and collect your documents ahead of time, um, you're able to go ahead and, and do that throughout the application process. And so honestly, I think this new system is actually really excellent. We're very excited to be able to support students filing through this online system. If you have questions, you are always welcome to contact our office via email iss at scu.edu or for OPT and STEM OPT extension questions, we do have what we call express advising. So you can always book an OPT or STEM OPT express advising appointment um, to get those questions answered. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks for sticking around with us.